Today in the news, we got some 30, 90, and gigabyte slips up. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. So the RTX 3080 is finally out in the wild, and despite its entire stock vanishing in the second after launch, and yes, that's a singular second, the reviews and performance look really good for a $700 GPU. By the way, they have a Q&A talking about how bad the launch was, so I'll link it down below. Anyways, according to the 14 game average benchmark from Hardware Unboxed, the RTX 3080 scores a 20 to 30% lead over the 2080 Ti. Really good considering it's almost half the price of what the uh, RTX 2080 Ti cost at launch. But what about the new $1,500 flagship, the 3090? Well, it's going to be released to the public in three days, but just like the 3080, a full suite of benchmarks has already been published. This review comes from the same people who published a full RTX 3080 review before the embargo lift. So, for double the price, we should expect a pretty hefty performance boost in gaming, right? Not double, but something significant, I hope. Nope, in fact, not at all. According to the Tech Lab video, the 3090 is on average about 10% faster than the RTX 3080. That's including games that support features such as DLSS and the RTX feature set. On the low end, you have games like Rainbow Six Siege giving you a mere 5.8% performance increase compared to the 3080. And on the higher end, at 4K, once again, Death Stranding with DLSS and RTX off gets a 11.5% increase in performance. That's pretty disappointing if you ask me, but there is a silver lining. According to the Blender database, the 3090 is around 15-23% to faster than the recently released 3080. This makes sense since there are, well, about 20% more CUDA cores in the 3090 and those benchmarks scale really well. Now there are no benchmarks for 8K gaming, which is kind of where Nvidia is trying to push this card. So it's going to be interesting to see where it falls in that super high resolution. With its 24GB of VRAM, the 3090 is sure to have an advantage, which brings me to our next topic. The 3080. It looks like Gigabyte might just have let the cat out of the bag for the models with higher VRAM. The registration page for Watchdog Legion, the game that comes free with your 3080 purchase, has revealed a number of unreleased cards. Like we expected, we have the RTX 3070 Super. It looks like it's a super branded model since, well, there's an S there. The 3070 Super will feature 16 gigabytes of VRAM and the 3080 Super, 20 gigabytes of VRAM. So exactly what we expected. As for the launch window, I highly doubt that those will see the light of day before Navi. So yeah, that's November onwards. Those two super variants are going to be interesting. I mean, this isn't an actual refresh, at least not if it's going to be released as a response to Navi, which brings me to the price with double the VRAM of their non super variants. What are the prices going to look like? Are we just going to see a hundred dollar difference? In my opinion, we might see more since the 3080 with 20 gigabytes of VRAM gets really close to the 3090. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Next up, we got Microsoft. The company already has a bunch of successful studios like 343, Mojang, and more, and it looks like they're not done growing. Microsoft has just started the process to acquire ZeniMax Media. If that doesn't ring a bell, it's the company that owns Bethesda, id Software, and many more, creators of Doom Eternal, Skyrim, and the Fallout series. This means Xbox and PC might be getting a whole lot more timed exclusives from that company in the future. Oddly enough though, Bethesda is currently working on two PlayStation timed exclusives already, Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo. Microsoft stated that it will still honor those, but future games will be on a case by case. Bethesda will still publish games on their own branding though, so it won't be part of the Xbox Game Studio, but it's still owned by Microsoft. In any case, having Microsoft behind Bethesda is much less of a concern when we talk about PC gaming, since the company seems to really want to unify console and PC gamers. What do you guys think? Speaking of Xbox, a new feature is now available is now available in their Xbox beta mobile app. It seems like you can now preload a game into your console without owning it and before its release. This is such a great feature, allowing you to play right away without having to wait for hours of downloading or having to download large day one patches for physical copies of digital games that you purchased. 
Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. As usual, leave a like if you liked it. You can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.